I want to apologise to you today uh, because we are genuinely sorry for any anxiety that has been caused. But as she spoke, news was emerging of a Windrush citizen whose son is apparently due for deportation tomorrow. In a statement, Ruth Williams said, I feel betrayed and a second-class citizen in my own country. This makes me so sad and the Home Office must show some compassion. I am unwell and almost 75. I live on my own and I need my son to stay here. I need my family around me and I can't face being alone. He has applied to the Home Office and been refused twice. On board, on their way to Britain, the Windrush generation were invited to Britain to help rebuild after the war. But new immigration rules mean people like Sonia Williams, who joined her parents here 44 years ago, now have to prove their right to remain. My children, all three of my children. And the state now says Sonia can't work, use the NHS, or even drive. What do I do? I can't even drive my car. Me and my husband share a car for over 20 years. I've held a dri um, driving license with my face on it. They asked the DVLA to take away my driving license. Disgusting. They didn't even inform me. That's the first I knew I was illegal, is when the DVLA said, you're not resident in this country. Yet incredibly, as Caribbean leaders left Downing Street, no one could even say how many people are affected. It is a concerning matter, uh, but we take, we take note that the government has given a commitment. Justice is going to be done uh, and is in the process of being done. Theresa May, whose immigration rules led to this situation, will be hoping that justice is also seen to be done, and quickly. Carl Dinan, ITV News, Westminster. The Labour Party, well, trust reaction, me. Well, reaction, I'm joined by someone who you saw in that the report. I'm by Glenda gold. Caesar, who came here as a three-year-old. Glenda worked for the NHS for 25 years, but had to leave because she didn't have the required citizen paperwork and now isn't able to claim benefits for the same reason. Thank you both for coming in to talk Thank to me about this. Glenda, an apology today from the Prime Minister. Does that help? Not really, it's just a little too late, you know, um, because uh, it's not something that we didn't highlight. I highlighted it a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, but there was no way. I was just coming up against brick walls. It was no, no, no. Um, after a while, you just say, you know what, I just can't be bothered anymore. I'm just tired now. Um, and it just it threw me into a state of depression, I must admit, because I was so used to working and looking after my family. Mm -hmm. And... Even now, if I haven't got that paperwork in my head, I still won't believe it. You've lived with this for months and months and months, but there will be people who are coming to this situation new in the last week, and they are surprised, they are genuinely shocked that people who came here, who were invited to come to this country to work, and their children, have been treated this way. This is it. You know, it's... <sighs> it, it, it... I, I don't even know how to what, how to explain it. It's it, it's unfair to us because we like you say we were our parents were invited here. Mm -hmm. I was invited here. I was a baby. I didn't know. I've come to England with my. I don't know. All I know is I went to school here. I raised my children here. I worked for England mm -hmm. as an NHS. So Sonia, you've done the same thing. You came as a <laughs> thirteen-year-old, as we saw in that report. You can't even drive your own car. No. Do you feel reassured today? that this is now your official home? No, because I came after 73, I came in 75. So that don't apply to me. Goodness. And then today the Home Office rang me, but basically didn't tell me anything, didn't give me any news. They didn't make me feel any better. They haven't reassured me of anything. I don't know where I stand. Can I just get your quick reaction to uh, the gentleman we saw in Carl's report there, who was told that he would be deported tomorrow. The government has just got in touch to say he will not be forced to leave the country until his place is clarified. But given everything that's going on right now, how do you react to effectively a, a last minute change on this particular person's case? I don't really know his case, but I mean, to say that he was going to be deported tomorrow mm -hmm. and then suddenly he's not going to be deported, why? How did they come to that conclusion and why? Mm. But it's also, you know, they knew about these sort of peoples. Where was the systems in the beginning? Why wasn't 
why weren't we separated, people like myself and Sonia and the others who were going through it, why weren't we separated from this new immigration list? Mm. Why, where was the list when we came over here for you to refer back on? Labour Party, lots lots incompetent. Of still to be answered, uh, Glenda and Sonia. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. You're